Hello folks, welcome back to the show here on Flick Direct, where I give you all the latest that happened in entertainment news throughout the week, and then I give you guys my personal take on the matter at hand. I'm your host, Austin Putnam, and unfortunately we start the show off on quite the bummer, and then that is because of due to the coronavirus, many things in the film world have been either postponed or delayed indefinitely. So I don't know if you guys have been paying close attention to movie release dates or films that were supposed to come out recently, like for films that were supposed to be coming out either a week ago or within the next month because films such as Mulan, Antlers, which is one of my most anticipated films of the year, also A Quiet Place Part 2, New Mutants, to which that movie just cannot catch a break at all. Also, films such as Fast and Furious 9 was delayed for an entire year and No Time to Die, like I mentioned, I believe a week or so ago that was being delayed until November. So unfortunately, due to the coronavirus, many films have been delayed. Well, it's only really films that are supposed to come out either within the next week or so, really in the next month. So it's nothing too bad, but at the same time, it really sucks because I know a lot of people, such as myself, are looking forward to those films, mainly Antlers, No Time to Die, and of course, I was actually really excited for Milan and actually A Quiet Place Part 2. It's not like these films are not going to be coming out. The distributors for these movies will still be releasing these films. They just don't know when. I'm assuming when, of course, when everyone is healthy, they'll want to have everyone come back in a safe, controlled environment to enjoy these movies for everyone who can see them. And the other big bummer is, of course, once again, due to the coronavirus, is that a couple of big theater chains, the two of them I can think of at the top of my head, AMC, which is actually like 15 minutes away from where I live, and also Cinemark, are also, get this, they are not seating theaters at full capacity. From what I heard, they are only seating at 50% capacity. So let's say if your theater has, let's say, like 100 seat capacity, they're probably only going to be able to sit 50 or even maybe less, depending on the movie that is out that weekend. But here's the thing. I guarantee that a lot of people will not go to the movie simply because they are afraid to get infected with the coronavirus, which is completely understandable. Can you imagine how Netflix is going to do knowing that theater chains are losing money at this point? I mean, I have AMC A-list, so I'm still giving the movies my money at this point still. But could you imagine streaming services like Hulu, Netflix, Amazon Prime, I believe there's a couple of others out there. Oh yeah, Shudder, which is a really good horror streaming service. Can you imagine how good they're going to be doing in this time period? I mean, I can only imagine how much subscription services went up, not in terms of how much people are paying, but how many are going to streaming services because of this. So what I will say is this, it's a good move on AMC's part, and I believe Cinemark is doing this as well for them to only seat half capacity, but at the same time, I don't know really a lot of people that will go to the movies at this time due to the coronavirus, so we will have to see how this plays out. Okay guys, it is time to get those spirits back up because I know that everyone is scared due to the whole coronavirus thing, but I do have a couple of news stories that if you guys haven't heard these, I'm pretty sure you have because they are all over the web, but if you haven't heard these things and if you're looking at something to get your spirits back up, well get ready because starting with this, we're going into the superhero genre for our next story and that we have some news for Thor. Love and Thunder. We have not only one big news story for Thor Love and Thunder, but two of them. The first one is that Christian Bale is playing the main villain in Thor Love and Thunder. I just want to point this out really quick. I love how Christian Bale goes from playing one of the biggest superheroes of all time, Batman, in the DC movies from Nolan's Dark Knight movies, to playing a villain in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And ironically, the moment I heard this, I thought of Harvey Dent's quote from The Dark Knight saying, you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself becoming the villain, and hey, look what happened here. But not only that, it has been confirmed that the Guardians of the Galaxy will be in Thor Love and Thunder, which is awesome. And I mean, come on, this makes complete sense knowing the end of Avengers Endgame. Now, the thing I wonder is this, since that the Guardians will be in Thor Love and Thunder, I wonder if Thor is going to be in Guardians 3. Now, I don't think James Gunn has confirmed this, but I think he has hinted or suggested that. Either way, I think it is amazing that the Guardians of the Galaxy will be in Thor Love and Thunder. I can wait to see what they're going to do, specifically knowing that Taika Waititi is writing and directing this thing. This is going to be insane. On to the final news story of this week, and this was a story that right when I read this, I thought, this is perfect. So, I don't know if you guys have seen The Invisible Man yet. If you haven't, please go check it out, well, even though we are living in some quite scary times right now. But if you guys have not seen The Invisible Man yet, 
that film is awesome it is currently i mean i know we're only three months into the year so far but it is so far my favorite film of 2020 right now what i thought that lee winnell did with the invisible man was really really cool but since that the invisible man did very well for blumhouse apparently blumhouse is not done with the universal monsters in terms of rebooting them so apparently what they're doing next is that they're going after the next big universal monster now to be fair all the Universal Monsters are classics. I have seen all the classic movies. They are phenomenal films if you guys have not seen those. But apparently the next classic Universal Monster that Blumhouse is going after is Dracula. But what's even cooler is knowing that Blumhouse is eyeing, I don't know if she's signing the dotted line quite yet, but they're eyeing director Kara Kasuma, I believe that's how you pronounce her last name, to write and direct Dracula. Now, if you guys don't know who Karen Kasuma is, you may know her for films such as Jennifer's Body to Witch. It's not a particularly great film, but it's a fun little horror film. But there is one particular film that you guys need to see. It's I think it's still on Netflix. It's called The Invitation. It is a terrific and a very unselling movie. Now, it is kind of a slow burn at the beginning because you have no idea what's going on. But the more it goes on, the more eerie and unsettling it gets. And it's a terrific movie on Netflix that I highly suggest you guys watch. He also did a film called Destroyer starring Nicole Kidman, to which I still need to see. And I don't know if she has signed the dotted line quite yet. But knowing that she is being I to direct Dracula, I hope the deal goes through. I hope she has signed the dotted line because I cannot wait to see what not only Blumhouse has in store for Dracula, but what a new director has in store for this. Alrighty guys, and that is going to do it for this week's show. Please comment down and let me know below. How do you guys feel about all of our stories when it comes to all these movies being delayed due to the coronavirus? How all these theater chains, specifically AMC and Cinemark, are only sitting at half capacity? But also when it comes to the more positive stories of the week, how do you all feel about the Guardians of the Galaxy being confirmed to be in Thor Love and Thunder while also Christian Bale being confirmed to play in the main villain? And finally, how do you all feel about Blumhouse tackling Dracula? And who would you personally pick to direct Dracula, the new Dracula film? Let me know below. I hope y'all enjoyed this week's show. If so, please hit that like button, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell for whenever a new video from us goes live. If you'd like to see any of our previous two shows, please click on the right there or there. And of course, until next week's show, we'll see you guys next time. Have a great week and stay safe out there, guys.